step four, the focus was to lo remove larger contaminants and debris. From here, the goal was to put measures in place to further remove fine sediment, dissolved solids, and any other deposition which can come from your roof surface at the start of a rainfall event. After a period of no rainfall, debris can accumulate on your roof. Once it begins to rain again, this debris can then wash into your system unless you divert the first flush. First flush diverters play a vital part in any rain harvesting system, stopping dirty and hazardous particles of finer matter from flowing into your system, which can contaminate your rainwater supply. However, this water doesn't need to go to waste, as you can manually empty this water or automatically release it into your stormwater or into your garden. The two main types of pollutants are dry deposition and wet deposition. Dry deposition is matter which builds up on your roof over time, including dust, dirt, leaves, droppings, any other animal matter. Perhaps if you live near an industrial area or even busy roads, particulates can be thrown into the air and they can deposit on your roof surface. Wet deposition is that which is pulled from the sky as it rains, hence it's called wet. These might include things like smoke, airborne pollutants from industrialised areas, uh, acid rain, maybe even jet fuel if you live near a flight path. In a period of no rainfall, this dry deposition can build up over time on the collection surface of the roof. Then when it rains, this matter is washed into the system. Typically, the bulk of the matter is washed off in the early stages of the rainfall event. Similar to how if you're hosing down a car, most of the dirt's going to come off at the start. First flush diversion is when the more contaminated portion of this water is directed away from your tank before automatically switching back to tank mode so that you can collect the remaining rainfall. The next step is to define how much water you should divert to give you the optimal quality of water without diverting too much water away from your tank. We've got to make sure we balance that quality and quantity equation. The volume of water we want to divert is dependent on your environmental factors and what you require from your system so that you can weigh up again that quantity of water that you can afford to discard versus the quality of water that you want to keep. As the rainfall event starts, as it washes off the bulk of the dirt and debris within the first few millimetres of rainfall, this is the water that you want to discard because it's the most polluted. Then we want to start capturing the rest of the water. Most first flush diverters work automatically and they can be configured to divert a certain volume of water. So first, consider if you deem your area to be in a low, medium or high level of pollution based on your geographic location, perhaps what sort of flora and industries around you as well. A low pollution area is defined as a low density housing area without any overhanging trees and no real major transport corridors or industry nearby. In this case, you only want to divert the first 0.25 millimetres of rainfall. So that means if you've got a 100 metre catchment area, you'll be diverting the first 25 litres. So next, if you're in a medium polluted area, perhaps there's major roadways sort of in relatively close by, um, or maybe there's flight paths close by, maybe you're not directly under them, then we might define that as being in a moderate pollution zone. So in this case, you might want to divert the first half millimetre of rainfall. So again, if we've got the same roof, 100 square metres, that means we might want to divert 50 litres compared to the 25 before. Lastly, if you're much closer to industry, agriculture, perhaps you've got a lot of overhanging trees, then you might be categorised as being in a high pollution zone. And you might want to divert the first one millimetre of rainfall. So again, on that 100 square metre roof, that'd be 100 litres worth. There are lots of first flush solutions, depending on how much you need to divert, and where you're going to put it. Some will require a small chamber to temporarily hold the water before it's discarded, whereas others might automatically divert the water without the need for any sort of intermediate storage vessel. Whichever type you choose, diverting the first flush is a significant thing that you can do to improve the quality of the rainwater you collect. It's one of the most important components in any rain harvesting system.